orthogonal projection is something that's very naturally expressed in terms of the dot product. Now let's talk about problems that actually require the dot product. So these will be Euclidean types of problems, unlike the affine types of problems that we've dealt with over the last couple of lectures. Uh, so one thing I said about the dot product, which is absolutely true, is that it does not have a direct geometric interpretation. However, there is a geometric interpretation that's so nearby, it's so close by, that we have to mention it and we'll have to work with it quite a bit, and it's the projection. I think that project orthogonal projection is something that's very naturally expressed in terms of the dot product, and from that we can get to orthogonality and many other things. So let's talk about that. So here's the geometric problem, and that is, I'll state it in terms of vectors. We have a vector A, and we have a vector B at an angle gamma to the vector A, and they're different lengths. And the question is, what is the orthogonal projection of the vector B onto the vector A? And more precisely, how do you express it vector algebraically? So first, let's draw it, and next, let's figure out how to uh, express it algebraically. And then you'll recognize this as something very much related to the Gram, to Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. So, what is orthogonal projection? You go and draw a line through the tip of B that's orthogonal to the vector A. And wherever it lands on the vector A, that's the projection of B onto the vector A. Let me call it P for projection. Okay, that's it. That's what it is geometrically. That's what it means geometrically to project B onto A orthogonally. Now the question is, how do we express P in terms of operations that we have at our disposal? And those operations are vector addition, vector multiplication by a scalar, and the dot product. And for this, we'll need the dot product. All right, so let's write down the one thing that's obvious, is that P will be some multiple times A. We just have to figure out what multiple it is. Okay, well, let's see. What is the length of the projection? The length of the projection you can determine it from this angle, where the length of the hypotenuse is b. We denote the length of a vector b by the same letter without the arrow above it. So it's a right triangle where the hypotenuse is b and the adjacent angle is gamma. So of course the length of this side, which is the vector that we want, is b cosine gamma. That's the length of the vector p. So we're interested in a vector that is the length b cosine gamma and points in the direction of a. So I think I can write it this way, uh, b cosine gamma, because that's the length that I want, right? And you see I wrote it above because it's going to be a fraction. So if I just left it like this, if this was the coefficient, then here we have a vector whose length is a b cosine gamma, right? Because the length of this vector is a without the arrow. And it's being multiplied by the number b cosine gamma. So the length of the vector you see on the board right now is a b cosine gamma. That's the length of this vector. And we want it to be the length b cosine gamma. So there's an extra factor of a, so we have to divide by that length. So that's the correct answer, except it's flawed because it is not expressed strictly in terms of vector addition. Well, there's no vector addition here. Vector multiplication by numbers, scalars. Well, that we have. But this number has a mixture of lengths and angles in it and not just the dot product. So we have to solve that problem, which I think the solution almost presents itself because you can almost see the dot product in there. So we'll fix it very easily. I just want to say one thing first, 
is that it's kind of natural, I'll write it and erase it, to write it this way. This is a good way to think about it. Uh, I just rewrote it slightly because if you think about what this vector is, it, this expression has a very nice geometric interpretation because this is a vector of unit length. So it's a vector of unit length in the direction of A. So that's good to know, right? Uh, that, that we're able to express that. Again, it's not in terms of the dot product, but uh, we'll get there. Okay, so how do we convert this to the dot product? Well, we need a b cosine gamma. That's the definition of the dot product. So I'm just going to put an a here and make up for it here. And this is nice because on top we have a dotted with b. And on the bottom we have a dotted with a. And again, you might think this is kind of backwards because the dot product is defined in terms of lengths and angles. So we have lengths and angles, yet we're substituting the dot product, even though circuitously the dot product is defined in terms of lengths and angles. So it feels like we're going in circles. But the idea here is the perspective. The perspective is uh, our goal is to simply organize our expressions as effectively as possible. And that's what we're doing. And so the limitation that we chose for ourselves is to limit ourselves to three operations only. Vector addition, multiplication by a scalar, and dot products. And not make any direct references to lengths or angles or anything else. Just those three elements. And the fact that we'll keep succeeding will we'll keep elevating the stature of the dot product as an amazing operation in our minds. Everything can be done in terms of the dot product. Maybe how, you know how in real life, if you have to make a complicated decision, maybe you go back to your morality and the concept of good and evil and right and wrong. And you use that as your ultimate compass, right? Because that's so important. So this is kind of similar. The dot product is our compass. Okay, so let's, Let's uh, bring this home and write it in the way that we were, that we just observed. That's the expression. We've succeeded to limiting our tools to the three fundamental elements, which include the dot product. Those are the only elements in that expression, and actually just two out of three, because we didn't need vector addition for this one. Okay, so that's what makes it a success. So that's orthogonal projection of B onto A. Now, a related operation, there's a good term for it. The term that I really like is orthogonal projection of B away from A, which is this vector right here. It's what's left, right? It's what's left when you take away this projection of B onto A. When you take it away from B, you're left with something orthogonal to A, right? You can think of any vector, if there is a reference such as A, such as the vector A, you can think of any vector as having two parts, a part that's orthogonal to A and a part that's parallel to A, right? You can break up everything into two projections, onto and away from. So that's what can happen here as well, uh, and that's this vector right here. And that's nice because this gives us a vector that's orthogonal to A and is also related to B. So I've, I've kind of or thought by taking this part, which is starting with B and taking away the orthogonal projection, uh, is finding a, way, finding a vector that's orthogonal to A that's as related, as closely related to B as possible. So in a way, I've orthogonalized B to A. Does that make sense? Uh, what would be a good letter? I guess I'll call it Q. I'll call it Q. And so Q, well, we know exactly what it is. It's B minus the orthogonal projection of B onto A. So I just have to subtract it from B. Okay, there you go. And one second. So one thing I want to say about this is that now we have all three elements here. We have vector addition, we have multiplication by a number, and we have dot products. So all three elements are exhibited in this expression. One other note that I wanted to make is that when you look at this expression, 
uh, you have to analyze the taxonomy of it, like what belongs with what and what can you treat with your uh, carefree algebraic intuition and where you have to be a little bit careful. So you have to realize that these A and B are glued to each other. And this A and A are glued to each other. That happens first. So you dot A and B, that's a number. You dot A and A, that's another number. Then you divide this number by this number in the most ordinary first grade sense. And then that number gets multiplied by the vector A. In particular, there is no way, uh, I don't mean to insult you by saying this, but you know, we tout how this approach to geometry invokes our geometric intuition and it's a good thing. But there are parts in our geometric intuition that don't apply. And one of the things that don't apply is a cancellation of this sort, which is just not valid. I don't even want to spend time justifying why it's not valid. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you remember from your linear algebra class Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization? Oh, so you never studied. Yeah. But, but you had five years of calculus, right? <laughs> this is, but do you see what we did here? We made the vector b by subtracting this much from it, we made it orthogonal to a. It's almost like we made b orthogonal to a. This is called Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization.